Hi, welcome to another vlog. So I thought I would take you along for another week in the life of a musician vlog. It's about four o'clock and I just finished my teaching for the day and pretty soon I have some friends coming over for a rehearsal. We've got a concert coming up next week with the Chamber Music Collective that I co-direct with my friend Julia called Sonora Collective. So we are excited to start preparing and rehearsing for that today. So I thought that I would show you what I am currently working on for the concert coming up. We've got first up a piece by Ginestera, Impresiones de la Cuna, and then we've got just the Barinere from the Bach B minor suite. Classic, classic, classic piece. And then solo flute, this is Valerie Coleman's Danza de la Mariposa, and this is a piece that I've performed several times now, so I'm always happy to get the chance to share this piece and to play this piece, um, but there are always those same spots that are just so tricky that I will still have to keep working on. It just feels like, I don't know, it sticks in the fingers for a bit, but then if I take too much time not practicing it, we're right back to the beginning. And then we've got a movement from a duo for flute and viola by Divian, just the rondo movement. I get to play with my friend Leah. And then finally, for my portion of the program, we've got Vivaldi Concerto for Flute and Strings, La Notte, or The Night. And this is a piece that we played in our December concert. The same thing in this piece, you know, it's like no matter how much you practice these tricky spots, like after not playing it for a month or so now, uh, I have to <laughs> do the practicing again. But that's how it is, right? It never ends.
Good morning. I made a cup of tea. I never drink hot beverages really. Okay, I drank a hot cappuccino yesterday, but I don't gravitate towards hot beverages, especially tea, but it just felt like the appropriate thing to do given the amount of snow happening out there. Honey, come here. Honey. It's a really good day to stay inside and just sleep, but alas, we have things to do today. Thankfully, I can do them inside. But anyway, I just got off a call with the production team for the concert that we have with Sonora Collective coming up next week, which is so exciting. In the years that we've been running this chamber music collective, planning concerts and all of that, we have to coordinate all of the details ourselves. So it's been really cool to work with a venue that is presenting us for the concert and um, they're handling the logistics of everything, like transportation and all of these things. So that's really, really cool and it feels like a luxury. So very grateful for that. The concert was fabulous last night. James Ennis is amazing. Like, have you ever been to a concert or heard a performer and you hear them and you're just like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what is the point of this? You feel so inspired, but also so depressed all at the same time. We're all on our own journey. That's what matters. But sometimes it's just like, wow, mind blown. So good. Today now I have a few students to teach and I have a bit of time in between each one of them. So I'm hoping that I can structure that time to get some things done. The snow is really coming down. It's so cozy. I wish I could show you the full view. Yeah, it looks incredible. I think I burned my tongue a bit on that tea. <laughs> Double tonguing is gonna be interesting today. I feel like that's why I gravitate towards cold beverages instead because I am just like living in constant fear of burning my tongue or the roof of my mouth and not being able to play. I don't know, wind player things. <laughs> So I just finished teaching two lessons as well as recording my etude. I think I got an okay take, I don't know. I'm just trying to keep moving through those ones because I think by now I should be really on like the fifth one if I'm trying to do one week by week. But anyway, I had some great lessons with students. I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but I just want to play all the pieces that my students are working on. I think I've got two students right now working on the Andante Pastorel and Scherzettino by Taffanel. I love this piece. Um, I played it in a recital my freshman year in my undergrad and I don't know, it's so much fun. And now I just want to play it again. And the same thing, I've got some other students working on the foray fantasy and I'm like, I want to play the foray, but I've got to stay on track. <laughs> but it's, it's hard because I just, I love music and I want to play all their pieces. Um, it's so fun. I think now we might take Miguel, our dog, to the park so that we can go play in the snow. Hermes had a rehearsal at the Met this morning, but his second one for the day got canceled. So he's free and yeah, I think we should go enjoy the snow. Hi! Are you so happy?
Hello, hi, happy Wednesday. Do you ever have one of those days where you just don't know where the time went? Because that's what's happening to me today. I spent most of the day so far practicing, answering emails, making a TikTok and a YouTube short, posting on Instagram, answering messages on Instagram. This stuff just, I don't know, it just takes up more time than you would expect. But I'm also really trying to stick to the practice routine that I created and uh, my February reset video and I've been sticking to it pretty well so far, but it does take time and today I just didn't have quite as much time um, But we have to get ready. It's about 3 15 3 20. I have to be at a rehearsal at 4 30. I'm playing at a house concert tonight It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day by the way, and I'll tell you more about it in a second But first I gotta take a shower so tonight's concert I'm not quite sure who the audience is but I made a vlog back in the fall where I played a house concert and this is related to that and the fact that uh, the composer that was performing and whose work that I played at that concert asked me to play another concert. We're going to be playing one of his original pieces, which this is now my third time getting to play, a really cool piece for flute, viola, and piano. And then also a movement of the Pulang Sonata, which I haven't played in a while, but I think it should hopefully still be in my fingers. And then an arrangement of Piazzolla Oblivion for flute, viola, and piano as well. So yeah, I'm excited to get the chance to perform on Valentine's Day. Let me know in the comments, do you celebrate Valentine's Day? Do you like Valentine's Day? Do you hate Valentine's Day? Are you neutral towards Valentine's Day? I never really like, I don't know, when I was younger, it was so fun to send Valentine's to your classmates, like back in elementary school. But then as I got older, I don't know, I don't really find myself celebrating Valentine's Day. Like my husband and I, we don't really do anything for it. Um, he's from Argentina and I think in Argentina it's not, at least when he grew up and where he grew up, it's not quite as a big deal as it is in the US. Here it seems like really like pushed down our throats, like buy them flowers, buy them a card, all this. But I do love a good Galentine's Day get together or just like celebrating all types of love, texting my friends and telling them happy Valentine's Day. But yeah, we haven't rehearsed yet. That's what we're gonna do at 4.30 and then the concert is gonna be right after that. Have you guys ever played in a house concert before? Like performed in a private home? Or in this case, a apartment? I really like playing these types of concerts just because it's very intimate and yeah, it's, it's fun to get to interact with the audience in a much closer way than you would be able to do if you're up on stage really far removed from them. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna layer this with my necklace that says Miguel, my dog's name, our dog's name, because he is my true love, my true valentine. Okay, let's go.
it's Friday. I know. <laughs> So today I have to do some teaching. I thought that, you know, it's Friday. I'm gonna treat myself with a coffee. I mean, I had a coffee yesterday and then for, but this is um, something a little more special. This is a fun coffee, strawberries and cream. It's interesting, it tastes pretty good. Very, I guess, like Valentine's Day inspired. Being a musician and a freelancer and someone that doesn't have normal hours for a job, like, Friday doesn't really mean much to me, <laughs> but I guess, you know, it, it is the end of the week, technically. Tomorrow and Sunday, I still have to teach and work, and so, but I can say that I really enjoy what I do, so. If you've made it this far into the video, tell me how your February is going. Um, I don't know when this video is going to be posted, but tell me how things have been going, what you've been up to musically or non-musically. I'm always interested in hearing what you guys are up to. It's really great to catch up with you in the comments, so let me know. five o'clock it's almost time for his dinner which is why he's over there looking at me hi I know it's almost time um, but I am finished with my teaching for the day and I've just been practicing for the past few hours and I've been using this app that I wanted to share with you this is not sponsored at all um, but I just thought that it was uh, in, an interesting way to track your practice and I also just recently recently as in like yesterday started using a practice journal again i just feel like i have a lot of things going on right now and i need to stay organized and keep track of what i'm practicing and just you know jotting down anything else that comes to mind when i'm practicing um but this app is called toggle i think it might be marketed towards lawyers or other people that need to work and bill their hours to clients um, but it's really useful for musicians or for anyone that wants to keep track of timing any activity that you're doing And you can keep track of how long you practice each thing and then also at the end it shows you um, Like a handy pie chart of what percentage of the time you spent working on what so I think it can be very informative Maybe for if you're trying to make a new practice plan for yourself and just trying to see how long things take you to practice I think that could be really useful um, but yeah, let me know, what do you use to track your practice, if anything? Or do you use a practice journal? Is there an app you use? Do you not track what you're practicing? Or do you have another method that works for you? So I'm curious, tell me in the comments what you use to track your practice. Good morning. The other day I was watching some master classes and just taking notes in my practice journal and like I forgot how much I love this feeling of learning. I think also like with going to Carnegie and just hearing a concert spontaneously the other night, I think I'm just trying to get back into some of those things that were really important to me during my studies, listening and learning from that, reading. Um, I want to pick up some music related books, not like textbooks or anything, but maybe just something music related that could be interesting to read and yeah, it's been one of my goals to get back into reading. I used to be a really big reader when I was younger, but then as I got older, I think I just started feeling like I didn't have time to read or that if I was reading, it has to be something that's like educational or like a self-improvement type book, not just reading for fun. So I guess maybe these music books could be educational, but I think if I can find some topics that are also just fun and enjoyable to read about, I think that could be great. One of my students is auditing a music theory class just for fun. I think it's ended up maybe not being as fun as she wanted it to be <laughs> because it's music theory. But anyway, that also just kind of inspired me to just, you know, get back in my learning era. And you never stop learning. There's always something to learn. But I think maybe now just like having some distance from being in school and in the conservatory environment, I feel like I am ready to do some more 
learning in my field. I don't know if that makes sense or if any of you can relate. But yeah, we're gonna head to The Strand. It's a huge bookstore here in New York City. It's an iconic bookstore and I'm excited to take you with me. So let's go. so I can show you what I picked up. I got a lot of great things and several of them are out of print so um, it's kind of hard to come across one of them. One of them was a book that I was trying to find online a while ago and I couldn't find one for like less than 50 bucks so I think it's great that I was able to pick this up for not very much since it's used. All of these books are used so. So first up we've got a book called The Flute by Raymond Malin. So I think it just kind of gives you a history and the overview of the flute. There's some illustrations in here. It talks about the origins of the flute. So if you're into nerdy history stuff, this might be a book to try to pick up. It kind of reminds me of the grown-up adult version of those Discovery Kids books where they just had like lots of photos and it was like talking about one very specific topic. So yeah, very cool. Next up, this is the Pandora Guide to Women Composers from Britain and the United States from 1629 to present. I wonder when this was published, how present is present. 1994, okay, so it's a little bit on the older side. That feels bad to say since I'm a 90s child, but it's, it's getting up there. It's not uh, quite updated. <laughs> But I thought that this was a really um, great resource. You can see that it has just a ton of women composers um, throughout the years. Always looking for new works to discover and new composers to program, even if they are from older times, but you know, new to me, new to a lot of audiences. It seems like it gives a little blurb and mini biography about each of the composers listed in here and maybe with some of their uh, major works to check out. So this will be a really good resource. Another one that I picked up, this one is definitely still in print, but like I said, it is used. And this is a book that caught my eye. It's called Who Knew? Answers to Questions About Classical Music You Never Thought to Ask. I thought that this could be interesting. I have some other books that are like interesting facts about composers and classical music and I thought that this could be uh, a good one to add to that. So I'm excited to look at this. Next, I saw this and I was like, okay, I have to get this book. It's so cheap and it's out of print. Um, but this is just a book called Flute by the one and only James Galway, my flute hero. All of our flute hero, really. This is also an older book that's not currently in print. Um, it says copyright 1982. So, you know, some of the info could be a little outdated, but I think it's, I think it's still going to be quite relevant. It starts with the beginnings of the flute, then it talks about the recorder, the development of the flute, talking about quants, the modern flute, um, and then there's also a part two, which is just talking about practicing, playing, and developing technique contemporary music, which is not really so contemporary anymore. Modern gadgets, playing with recorded tapes. 
But yeah, like I said, I saw this, I couldn't resist, and I think it's a good one to add to my library. I have a lot of flute-related books and music-related books, so if you ever want me to do a video where I kind of just go through books that I think all musicians should read or flute players specifically should read, let me know and I can definitely make a video like that for you all. And then, okay, this is the book that I was looking for for a while. I'm also looking for a biography of Moise, Marcel Moise. But like I said, this is one that's out of print and it was hard to find for like less than 50 bucks, but I got this for $7.50. And it is Jean-Pierre Rampal's autobiography called Music, My Love. And if you're a flutist, you probably know who Ron Paul is. But if you're not a flute player, Ron Paul was one of our great flute players of the 20th century. But this looks like an interesting, very candid read. And I'm excited to jump into this. The first chapter is called, If Only You Had Worked a Little Harder. So it seems like it's very personal and um, there's some photos in here too. But yeah, I'm excited to jump into this and maybe also listening to some recordings as I go along with reading so but yeah so that is my little nerdy flute player book haul and I'm excited to get to jump into these and I'll keep you posted keep you updated with what I'm reading and how it's going but now it's time to do some practicing Hermias is gone all day he is currently playing in a recording session he's gotten the chance to do a lot of cool recording sessions lately. He played in the Barbie soundtrack. He's on that Dua Lipa song, Dance the Night Away, with the violins. <laughs> but anyways, really, really cool. So excited for him. But that's what he's up to. And I have the whole apartment to just practice all to myself. So let's get moving before the day just slips away. 